Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Papa Varian and we are in the last days of the war, in the last days and the last episodes of this series, as we are slowly but surely tumbling towards uh, 10 more weeks. Yeah, I think we are going to see the 8th of May here then. For the moment, we have many different, very, very difficult, uh, difficult tasks, but we'll focus on finding Lily's brother first, if at all possible. We only need one person. Okay. I shall eat a book, shall do it himself. And in the meantime, how do we get this done? The risk is quite high, of course, but not if we take a uniform, I don't think. Okay. Let's establish a hideout, I suppose, in the hut. Gustl Kleiner can go and do really anything that might be of value. Still very successful, actually. Yeah. Okay. And that's our plan for the week. The honorable man, not able to do anything for us yet. Maybe never. But we will have to see about that. Forced laborers are organizing a strike to fight for their rights and freedom. They asked us to support them and out of Friedrich and Jana SR are following their request. The strike is a success and reaches many people in and outside the factory. Arto thinks he has been seen, okay? Hmm? With the help from our supporters, Guido Buck wants to contact Gregor Blaustein, the brother of Lily. He's lucky and finds Gregor. Against all odds, brother and sister get reunited. Guido thinks he has been seen. Gustl Kleiner visits the group's known supporters among workers in Wedding to ask for additional donations. Has not been seen. I wonder what happened to Hildegard, you know? I wonder what happened to Hildegard. Seems to be a really good uh, place for a hideout. Okay. We got the hut under control, I suppose. Fast execution. Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler sets up special calls to execute war weary soldiers and civilians. Things only got worse before they got better. Trier conquered. Trier on the Mosel, one of Germany's oldest cities, is occupied by units of the 3rd US Army under the command of General George Smith Patton. Money transfer stopped. The Swiss Federal Council prohibits the import and export of foreign banknotes. Gustl Kleiner is late to our meeting. By the time he arrives, he is out of breath. No one is safe anymore, he says. Were you followed? No, but it feels just as bad. I was in line for rations with my friend Jenny, and she said something about the Nazis getting us into this mess, not realizing that SS men were nearby. One of them confronted her and asked her if she was an insurgent. She froze in terror and then ran. The SS shot her right there. In broad daylight. It was horrible. We hadn't done nothing wrong, but times are so desperate now. Everything is so, so terrible. Those animals don't think twice about killing anyone. That's what I mean when I say no one is safe anymore. Things are falling apart. Things are falling apart. There's no no more facade about the Nazi regime. No more facade at all. We could get the testimony. But again, unless I spot a third one. Yeah, I think the testimony is out of the window. We could set up another hideout. Wouldn't really hurt, I guess. But I would much rather see... I, I would much rather do this. I think we could possibly do it. If we didn't have all that focus on us. Uh, honorable man, still not available. I don't... See, I don't think we're gonna do this at all. Maybe I should invest more on the bombs, but... I would urge you, if you want to see all of the events of this game, then that you should purchase this game and play it yourself. There is, of course, replayability, which is surprising with a game like this one in terms of mechanics, because it is very story-driven, but the mechanics allow for a multitude of uh, additional playthroughs, I suppose. But I think what I really want to do is, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. How, how am I supposed to pull that off? I don't think we are in any position of pulling that off. I'm sorry I have to, uh, in case I, I have to disappoint you there. But it's just... I, I think... I'm not, you know, realistically speaking, I, I'm not going to go... and risk the lives of the members of this group like this. I will do this and see if we can't gain something that is actually useful to us, but... we'll have to see. Please, just go well. Just this one time. 
it's all is it always paint it might always be paint that's a bit disappointing i don't think the paint really that good zip muffed hitler gives order to arrest and punish families of soldiers who surrender child soldiers boys born by 1929 are drafted into the wehrmacht the young people are sent to the front after a short training period 1929 yeah 16 Bridgehead over Rhine. I mean, they... By 1929 is what it says. Bridgehead over Rhine. US American units occupy an undestroyed railway bridge over the Rhine near Remagen. The meeting is almost over when Dorothea Schmidt enters out of breath. I'm so sorry, I got lost on my way here and needed some time to find my way back. How could you get lost? You lived here for years and you've been here dozens of times. It is. Everything is gone. The shop where I usually turn left. It's gone. The building and landmarks are used for navigation. Every pile of rubble looks the same. Most of the ruins are barely recognizable, I agree. And after every bombing, it only gets worse. This testimony thing? I would love, I, I would love to do it, but just straight up. Wait, one, two, please tell me there's a third one somewhere. I think it's impossible. I, I do not think that we can do it. But you know what? I would really like to do this one. I would like to save these two. This one, though. Hmm. What about this one? Oh god, is this risky. Yeah, see, for this one, I think we would need these, you know, this stuff here. And now we have such a good shot at this. We could bring this up to the max. We could get three out of this. Does money up it? No. Can't actually get three. But two would already be really, really useful. Hmm. I think we're going to do this. Give me that. Then we're going to go ahead and disarm a Volkssturm squad. And then with a Volkssturm squad, we can, or like, rather, we can attack a Volkssturm squad. I think it's not too bad of an idea. But I also think we should go and the rest should go ahead and get some more money. Still nothing with the Honorable Man. Okay. You know what? I think this will be the last episode, even if it were to be a bit longer. Maybe an hour, an hour and a half, I think that is fine. This will be the last through the darkest of time, I think. Let's let's just see what we can actually let me reconsider. Do we need to do this? If I get this, I could use the I could use the tools that we gain here. The clubs for this mission, for example, but also for the... Yeah, no, we're going to do this just because it means that we can do this stuff easier. I think that's the right way to do it, yeah. Okay. Cool. Again? Can't do that. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. I think we're going to finish the series here with this episode. Gustl Kleiner visits the known supporters among the academics. Has not been seen. Very, very good. Has been seen. Not very good. Could be worse though. This has to work this time around, right? Force them to give their badges. Devastated, the patrol runs away, hurt in their pride. These boys will not go to war for Hitler anymore. The other things she has been seen. Rebirth of Poland. The USSR transfers territorial sovereignty to Poland of the German territories occupied by Soviet troops east of the Oder and Nice rivers. A very long, long topic. The lost territories east of the Order Nice. Many foreign uh, observers, as I would call it, in the modern day don't even realize just for how long German groups held on to the idea of getting those territories back. 1990, for a good reason, had a contract that, you know, in the wake of German reunification becoming an opportunity, had a contract that recognized the borders in full. They were slightly recognized before, uh, after the reconciliation period, but 
properly legally recognized was only the case then. It's a difficult topic. I mean, so many people lost their homes. So many people lost what they held dear. The Poles, of course, you know, lost the east of their territory. It is a tragedy in every single way, and I'm happy that the reconciliation eventually occurred. Bombers attack Berlin. US bombers fly an attack on the high command ship of the Wehrmacht leadership close to Berlin. Kamikaze, uh, kamikaze attacks. Kamikaze. Japanese armed forces attack US ships with kamikaze commands of the Japanese islands of Kyushu and Hondo. I'm so tired of it, says Dorothea Schmidt. What is frustrating you? I feel bad even complaining about it, but I used to be an academic. I did research. I was using my brain every day, and now the only work that's left is shoveling building rubble from one pile to another. I understand, but better times will come again. Once the war is over, your skills will be needed again. Thank you, Sister Rotea. I can't wait. This will actually take clubs, right? Like, we will lose them? Yeah. I don't know how interested I am in that, then. I would much rather... Oh. Really? Hmm. Hmm. See, none of us have empathy is the thing. Bit odd, you may say, and you would be correct, but... Uh, hmm. Ah, this is what you use explosives for, and you don't actually even make a bomb. Wait, what? You just use explosives. Not an actual bomb. Interesting. Interesting. We could theoretically do this, but honestly, I don't think that's... I don't think that's something that we are going to do. Okay, tell me about this. Come on. Can I use more than just 10 bucks and maybe... Oh. Arthur is really good with this. See, I'm afraid to bring the clubs, but I think it helps us enforce, and that is what we will do, is they can all eat up at least some sort of... Uh... Yeah, I think they can all eat up at least some sort of heat. I think that is okay. I would really like to bring the fugitives out. Look, if we can't do this, I would at least like to bring fugitives to the front line so that they may be safe as soon as possible. Observe army activities gives us intel. Doesn't really strike me as that good. Okay. Let's do this. Let's see what the radio station does for us here. Dorothea Schmidt meets with co-workers of our supporters in Kreuzberg and talks to them. I can't remember her wanted level. That's in force. I don't think she was at, at four. I'm not even sure that she was at three. She may have been though. She may have been at three. Not entirely certain. Gustav Kleiner visits the group's known supporters. He is successful and has, still has been seen. Hmm. Alright, let's take a look at this. Guido Book is trying to contact Western allies. All right, let's enforce. Be successful. So this just gives us intel on that, and that's it. I mean, it's not bad. Scorched Earth. Hitler orders all industrial and supply facil uh, facilities in the Reich to be destroyed as enemy forces approach. Hamburg under fire. U.S. American bombers fly a heavy air raid on Hamburg. Allied armies cross the Rhine. Churchill and Field Marshal Law Mon uh, Montgomery observe the passage of British, Canadian, and U.S. troops across the Rhine near Wesel. Listen. We need to do something. They got my neighbor's boy. Johanna is, uh, is furious. What are you talking about? The boy is 12. He's a member of the Hitler Youth. Yesterday I saw how they armed him and some of his schoolmates sent him to battle. Let them fight. Yes, they gave them bazookas and rifles and sent them to the front line. Let's disarm them, I suppose. We should take away their weapons. It's for their own sake. Boys outnumbered against fully trained soldiers. This madness has to end before all of us are devoured by it. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a good idea. Raise white flags. While the Nazis try to show their will for total destruction at NSIG, we shall make sure that everyone seeks what the people really want. Peace. Okay. Um, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a really good idea. So much heat, though. Hmm. 
<laughs> Where is this Hitler Youth Squad? And yeah, I think I was right, by the way. We just we just gotta give up on this idea. It is what it is, sadly. Hmm. Oh, we actually use up right. Okay, no, I I mean I understand. Okay. Yeah, I didn't play this last chapter very well. I'll be honest with you, I just wasn't entirely certain of what would be necessary. Now I have a lot of resources that we just don't need. The intel, you know, all of this is just like, it's so scattered. There's no proper plan behind it, but I gotta be honest with you, it's more difficult than uh, I'd like to believe. We have so much money. See, what does this... There's no risk attached to this. No, there is a shitload of risk attached to this, my god. Hmm. Red herrings. I'm just gonna send him into hiding then. I think you use those by, uh... By sending someone that doesn't have any risk level. And have them do it. I think that is how it goes. Anyway, let's move on. Again, I'm, you know, I, I know it's sucky. We're missing out on the opportunity here, but let's just try to survive. I guess it's literally, you know, survive. I'm enforcing. I got injured, that's okay. People appreciate this action as they are tired of the war. That's okay. He's injured. We, we can buy some equipment to heal him. Be perfectly fine. The boys try to look serious as they walk down the village lane. Not aware of how ridiculous they look in their oversized uniforms, their dollars and faces hidden under those big helmets. What is this? May I present Hitler's last line of defense, says Bruno, a trusted supporter who handles our rural activities. What are they doing? There. Bruno points to the bridge that leads over the Panka River. They're supposed to keep the Russians from crossing that bridge. Can't be serious. Told you. This is what they've come to. Setting up children as breathing tank traps in the villages around Berlin. They stand a chance. What do you think, boys? Barely trained, barely any weapons, scared and hungry? Against a full-fledged rolling army, it will be a bloodbath. We let it happen. How can we stop it? The fastest way would be to talk to the boys, but I doubt they will listen to us. What other option do we have? The other option involves dragging in someone else, which might endanger him. Let's talk to the boys first. The boys are fortifying the bridge with sandbags and barbed wire. I count four working on the bridge and three more working left and right. When we approach, the leader points his weapon at us and shouts, HALT! No passage. This is a restricted area now. We're setting up a line of defense to keep the enemy from crossing the bridge and entering Bear now. Wh who do you think you'll be able to stop with that? No Russian will pass as long as we are here, replies a small boy from behind. War's over. As long as there's a single true German alive, the war is not lost. He who defends one square meter of Germany defends the entire Reich. Forget it, says Bruno. They've been completely indoctrinated. What else can we do? Friedrich Wolf's, uh, Wolf, Wolf lives in that house over there up the hill. He's the village teacher. I know him. He's a good man. Let's see if we can get him to talk to the boys. They will listen to him and give up. Bruno leads me to a farmhouse up on a hill. Friedrich Wolf lives here. Right, we've, we've said that before. Man with white hair and a wrinkled face opens the door. Hello Friedrich, says Bruno. I'm glad you're home. Did you know that your pupils are playing Stalingrad down at the bridge? A dumped Volkssturm, says Friedrich. What am I supposed to do? Help us disarm them. They know you, I say. If you tell them to stop, they will listen. I doubt it will work. We must stop them, no matter what. Thank you. We get to the bridge where the boys are all way, uh, almost finished fortifying their position. The leader is instructing them on what to do and where to station themselves. He stops when he sees us. What? What do you want from us? We want you to stop. We have orders. We are no traitors. We will defend this bridge against the enemy. Hugo, says Mr. Wolf now. You were always a bright student and good at math. And good at math. 
There are thousands of well-trained soldiers coming this way. How long do you think you can hold it? Must give up. The war is over. Never, says Hugo. He looks at the rest of the boys. Who wants to give up? Who wants to betray the Führer? Now is your chance. Go with them. Go. I don't care. I will fight here alone if I must. It is my duty. None of the boys makes a move. Come with us. It doesn't help. They all stay where they are. Says Friedrich Wolf and points to a spot left of the bridge. I see a few rifles and bazookas, the weapons of the child squad. What's your plan? At three, we all run for the weapons and throw them into the river. Start counting. One, two, three. We run towards the weapons and before the boys understand what's happening, each of us has grabbed as many as we can and thrown them into the river, where they immediately disappear in the murky water. A gunshot. No! yells Hugo. He's holding a pistol and pointing at his former teacher, tears in his eyes. I will shoot you, you traitor! Put down your weapon, Hugo. Hugo, I'm your teacher. Put down the gun. You would be relieved that it's over now. Hugo lowers his gun. Go home. Reluctantly, they get their things and leave. Uh, their things and leave. We did it, says Bruno. We saved their lives. Thank you, says Friedrich. Thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. That same day, the SS ar uh, arrests Friedrich Wolf, the teacher. He's sentenced to death in a drumhead court martial for undermining a legitimate military action. Hugo, a student, testifies against him. Let me just actually... Friedrich Wolf. I think this might be in reference to a... No, he wasn't in, in Germany at the time, the man that I was thinking about. Hmm. What a shame. But this is, of course, the, the struggle between giving up and not giving up. It's emblematic for the time, I suppose. All those that remained in the rubbles had to decide which side they were on and what to do from there on out. Shame that we couldn't help Friedrich Wolf. The next day, the Red Army took Bernau. Red Army in Austria. Soviet troops have reached the Austrian border and advanced to Burgenland. Allies meet at Elbe River. Elbe River. Eisenhower informs Stalin that the US and British armies will expect the Soviet troops at the Elbe River. Hesse in American hands. Frankfurt am Main, Wiesbaden and Mannheim occupied by the US Army. At tonight's meeting, team members are discussing the rumors they've heard about the war. Friends, I think the end of the war is coming. I don't know whether to celebrate or despair, Arthur Friedrich says. We mean despair. The good news is that the Nazis are losing. The Allies are advancing from the west, the Russians from the east, continues Arto. The bad news is that if the Russians reach Berlin first, things may be even worse than before. How so? Confused, I say. Surely things will improve if the war uh, has ended. Friend, think it over. The Russians have suffered huge losses. Millions upon millions of people. They have no love for Germany or the Germans. What will they do when they take this city? That's a good question. We need this. We have one fake passport, so we have to utilize it here. Hmm. You, uh, yes, empathy. Looks. This looks a lot better, doesn't it? I'm gonna go with Johanna here. This looks fine. Okay. I need to be healed. We have a lot of people that are... That have heat on them. Raise more white flags, I guess. It sucks that we can't do anything meaningful, you know that? It, like, it just really sucks. Right, buildings. You don't need the intel. It's, it, you know, I gotta tell you, it's way too harsh. We could have actually done this one had this not been the case. We could have easily done it. Easily. No doubt about it. But since this was gone this early on, no chance. No shot at it at all. Not even a slight opportunity or anything, you know. I still get the testimony. Maybe there's a hidden one that I don't know about. No, you know what we're actually gonna do? We're gonna... Can you do this? Can you pull this off? 
Probably not, right? You so much money, though. Uh, what do we do with all this money? It's so, 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 so much money. I really want to do this one, but the risk is just insane. You know what? Okay, no, we can't do this. Well, I guess let's just get the test. It sucks. We're, we're kind of behind the curve here. And by kind of, I mean we're very much behind the curve. Let's continue. There's so much money and nothing to do with it, because we cannot do the single last objectives. I'm not going to sabotage the anti-air guns either. It's it's just... The city is rubbles. Out of things he has been seen. Using fake documents, Guido Book tries to get treated in an army sick bay. It works out. The nurses accept our documents and the wounded get treated. Lost morale and lost supporters. No surrender! Himmler orders to shoot all the people in whose house the white flag was hoisted. Hungary lost. Last German troops retreat from Hungarian territory to Lower, uh, Lower Austria. Submarines destroyed. Six German submarines are sunk in a British air raid on the port of Hamburg. Blech, says Dorothea Schmidt as she takes a sip from her coffee. This is disgusting. Oh yes, says Gustav Kleiner. They've managed to make the Ersatz coffee even worse than it was before. I miss real coffee. And mead. I would give anything for a good piece of beef. I mean, sure, everything is horrible and food and drink shouldn't be our biggest worries, but I tell you. If we at least had some good food and decent coffee, everything else would be easier to take. A lot easier. For a long moment, everyone is silent, probably thinking about the food they miss most. Hmm. Oh no, man, that sucks. I'm not gonna s no, I, I'm unwilling to sabotage the anti-aircraft guns. Absolutely unwilling. I think what we're gonna do here is... My god. Why does it suck so much? Um, if I do this, right, does this impact everyone? And if so, how does it help me? Costs us a lot of money. I, I can invest much more money if you need me to. Doesn't look like you need me to, though. I need everyone's level to be practically zero, okay? That is all I'm asking for. And I don't think it's possible. I mean, let's not be deluded here. Looking at this. I let's just test this. I've never done red herrings. Let's just do it. Let's just see where it goes, okay? What else can we do? And I'm gonna leave Gustel and Johanna so that they lose some of their points. I'm oh man, I'm I just really hate the way that this is working out here. Which I mean it's not working out at all. We can't do anything. We just have to hide and survive. That's literally all we do. Week week in, week out. I don't know, I'm hiding, I guess? If this fails, like... It worked. And two people still have been seen. Come on, man. Two people still get seen, that is incredible. Königsberg lost. The German occupation in the destroyed Königsberg surrenders to the attacking units of the Red Army. Resistance fighters executed. Theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer... I think that's him. Bonhoeffer is the man that I was thinking about. They died 900 a day. US troops liberate the German concentration camp Buchenwald. It's all coming to an end. All throughout tonight's meeting, Johanna SS hardly said a word. Are you alright? Everything okay, Johanna? I ask her. She looks up slowly. It will be okay. Eventually. I don't know if my father will forgive me, though. My family is running out of food and, as everybody here knows, ration, uh, ration stamps are hardly enough to stop us from starving. She shakes her head. I sold my father's coin collection on the black market for money and food even ask? No, I didn't ask, because he would have said no. Her eyes flash with anger. My family has to eat. Lothar Schmidt jumps in. She's right. Can't eat coins. Sorry. You do what you must to feed your family. I, we, I mean, swimming in money. Yeah, we're definitely going to bring this to an end here. Oh, it cleared the entire group, despite them being seen? What kind of mechanic is that? They're being seen and yet it clears them entirely? I mean... What? I'll take- look, I'll take it, but it makes no sense. Let's just do this. We get more clubs. Here's the way I see it. We get the clubs. We disarm the Volkssturm. And then with the gun, I'm trying trying to push this through. Actually, you know what? I think we can just do it right away. I, I don't see why we wouldn't be able to do it. I can't I can't do anything here. 
Even doing this, like, what, what will it do other than, I guess, morale? But let's just get these people to damn safety. Even if it brings me so much in terms of uh, issues, we're gonna be fine, okay? Let's just bring these people into safety. They've been imprisoned for such a long time. We have to help them now. No doubt about it. Honorable man, still not available. Built here, Schmidt meets with co-workers. Is that they still? Okay. Worked out flawlessly. Hmm? He has been seen. That's okay. Peter Book is bringing fugitives near the front line. Enforce it. See? No, enforce it. This will not fail. Done it. Edo book has been seen. That's okay. I got an achievement actually. Let me take a look at the safe place. Save someone from persecution. Angelika Klemperer and Michael Katz will live. Amorel uh, has suffered though. American victory. 325,000 German soldiers surrendered to the Americans in the Ruhr area. area. Medals for Volkssturm. On his 56th birthday, Hitler honors men of the Volkssturm and Hitler boys with the Iron Cross. Spain revokes support. Spain bans all German aircraft from landing in Spanish territory. Where's Arto? Arto Friedrich's apartment is empty when I enter the room. Dorothea has tears in her eyes. He died in the bombing yesterday. Where? Wilmersdorf. He was on a mission for us last night and got hit when the bombs landed. Found his body this morning. There's no doubt it's him. Family, no? Not yet. I thought you, you might want to tell them. They're going to bury him at the cemetery in Steglitz, together with the other victims from last night. I will not find a new member. Yeah, okay, ah, oh, I should have been doing this the entire time, I'll be honest with you. I could have been, I should have been doing that the entire time. We could have freed more and more and more people. Where is... Burial in Steglitz? I don't know where the quarter of Steglitz is. I maybe it's just an event that happens, but last time I said that it wasn't and I missed the interview. I missed so many things in this playthrough. I really want to encourage you to buy this game and play it yourself if you want to see where many of these things lead. Hmm. But I mean what are we gonna do? I guess organize a party? We need to raise our morale. I think we're good on supporters. Mostly anyway. Let's organize a party for peace. Is there risk? Actual risk attached to this? No. It is not quite here yet, but let's celebrate the upcoming era of peace that we are all waiting for. Cool. I don't- I do not see... the burial. I- I- I would very much like to do it though, in case I'm missing it. Honestly, this last chapter is surprising to me. Usually, games s struggle to find a finish. They struggle to find an end to a story. But this one is done excellently. It's just, it is very difficult to plan ahead. Which is why we haven't been able to do anything here, realistically speaking. This ends the current planning phase. It has been a long time since we met outside of our secret meetings or during a mission. Everyone brought their loved ones. For one night we avoid the topic that are dominating our daily lives so much on every other day. Do you remember when it was like uh, this all the time? Do you think it is? it will ever be better again? Asks Johanna Essa. Yes and yes. I do. And I'm sure there will be better times again. I understand, says Johanna. Then we should celebrate the, uh, the now as if there was no tomorrow. And on that day, we did. Hitler is dead. Adolf Hitler commits suicide in the bunker on the Reich Chancellery in Berlin. Allies meet in Germany. US and Soviet troops meet for the first time at Torgau an der Elbe. 
Nations Unite. Delegates from 50 states meet for the founding assembly of the United Nations in San Francisco. Arthur Friedrich was with us this entire time. At the meeting, Dorothea Schmidt looks excited. Everyone, I think I have a major find that could help us out. I was doing my job shoveling rubble from a destroyed building when I saw a valuable piece of equipment. I was able to smuggle it out before anyone noticed. Most people wouldn't even recognize the thing. It's a radio jammer. The Nazis have been using it to, uh, to jam allied broadcasts, but we can use it to jam Nazi broadcasts. Okay. I guess that's gonna be the last thing we try to do. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna do that because I have a such a high level of issues. Then why don't we go on and rescue two more people? You have to do what you can do, right? Even if we can't bring them past the front lines, we no longer need to do it. This is the end, and the honorable man will never become active. Yeah, my apologies again. It's just under the pressure that we were in. I tried my best. I saw it in time and I wasn't able to pull it off. It sucks. I, I regret it because it left me a bit rudderless, a bit goalless in this last chapter. Even though the last chapter seems very, very good to me in, in design. But we weren't able to get it. It sucks. It really sucks, honestly. I, I wish it weren't so. Because I, I would have liked to... Get this ordinary man failed again. Well, alright, let's say yes for the last time. When they, they hear the signal, Gustav Kleiner throws a uh, rope ladder over the wall. Minutes later, they are over the wall. The, gro uh, the, groups leave, the group leaves the prison behind as fast as they can. Peter Book uses a radio jammer to block the Nazi radio transmissions during a propaganda speech. The transmissions are barely understandable. This time Nazis couldn't spread their propaganda. A white flag is visible from far away. Someone in the building has hung a large bedsheet from the balcony of the second floor. Although the fighting is now only a few blocks away, it's the only white flag I've seen. I'm not the only one who has seen the flag. The truck hurtles down the street and stops in front of the building. An SS officer and three older men, possibly Volkssturm, jump out. Go, 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 says the officer, and they storm in. As I enter the building behind them, I can hear them banging at the door upstairs. Who put that flag out, followed by something I can't make out. Suddenly I hear gunshots and a woman screaming. Murderous, someone yells. More gunshots. Silence. Then steps come. Then steps coming down the stairs. I leave the building before the squad notices me. The white flag is gone. The gunfire is closer now and I can hear the deep growling of an incoming tank. The men run out of the building, jump into their trucks and drive away. They go back in and on an upper floor find an open apartment door. The man lies on the ground in a pool of blood. Further in lies a woman. She is also dead. A young boy, maybe ten, crouches in a corner weeping. What happened? Morning, Grandpa saw some of our soldiers coming down the street. He asked them how it looked, and they told him that we had lost, and the Russians would be here at any moment. They said the best we could do was to hang a white flag so they wouldn't shoot, uh, shoot at our building. That's what he did? Yes, that's what he did. And then these other soldiers showed up, and they were furious. They were screaming at Grandpa, calling him a coward, said that he must take down the flag. Grandpa got angry, said he had fought in the last war, and that they were cowards who have to force children and old people to fight a lost war. The commander just pulled out the gun and shot him. Sorry. Then Grandma started screaming, called the murderers. The commander kept shooting, then he ordered his men to get the flag. Grabbed it and left. They helped somehow. You think the soldiers were right this morning? If we lost the war? Boy nods. I think so too. To hang out that white flag again? First, we must cover up Grandpa and Grandma. Together we pull the bodies aside, fold their hands in their chests and carefully cover them with sheets. Uh, with che uh, sheets. Then we step out on the balcony. There are several white flags hanging from a building nearby now. The sound of tanks has also become much louder. Tie the white flag to the railing. We tie the flag to the balcony railing. As we finish, I see incoming Russian tanks, one followed by another and another. Dozens of them. There are soldiers sitting on top of the tanks. When they see me and the boy, they wave. 
However, peace. It's a sunny day in May 1946 when the group meets again in one of the few cafes that are still open. The city is in ruins, but the rebuilding has already begun. We sit together in the sun, sipping from our mugs of Hazat's coffee. Coffee. Like the old days, we are less fearful. How are you? How are all of you doing, I ask? Everyone has similar struggles, food, supplies, and the search for missing relatives and friends. We do everything we could, someone asks. We could have done more. We could have saved more people. We could have stopped this, I say. Maybe there was something else we could have done. Something more effective, something more radical. Or less radical, but more persuasive. The question remains, will the world learn from this? The world will learn from this. A signs of progress. They're even discussing a declaration of universal human rights. That's an improvement, no? But there's also a new conflict bubbling up between the US and the USSR. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were destroyed. The specter of nuclear bombs means the next war could threaten all of humanity. I cannot may uh, come to an agreement. Then I have to ask the question that has been bothering me for a while uh, for the past year. Our fight, what we did, what we sacrificed, is it worth it? Would you do it again? There's a long pause, then everyone silently nods. There's no debate here. To remain silent, to accept injustice and human suffering without a, uh, without a fight was never an option for any of us. I look at everyone and say, You know it isn't over, right? You know that the hatred isn't gone just because the Nazis lost the war. You know that our adversaries will still walk these streets, eager to return and spread the same ideas, commit the same crime, uh, crimes if we let them. They nod. End of scene. Our fight wasn't over. We all knew that. Though the inferno now subsided, the murderous spark that set the world ablaze endured. And so did the murderers. The leaders and the willing executioners fading into the woodwork, waiting for the next opportunity to lead the world into darkness. No, our fight wasn't over. In the rays of this afternoon's sun, our group took an oath. The darkest of times might be over for now, but our fight was not. We swore to keep fighting until the last of these criminals was brought to justice. We would not stop fighting until the last sign of Nazism was eradicated from the face of the earth. Our goal was to build a new world of peace and freedom. This was our responsibility to our murdered friends and relatives. This we swear. Oh. And this was Through the Darkest of Times, a game about the resistance in Nazi Germany. I hope that all of you take something, you know, with yourself from this playthrough, from this game. And from the time that it displays. May we never forget. May we never allow for it to be repeated. With that being said, I want to thank all of you for watching. I want to thank the members of the channel for supporting the series, which is not monetized because I don't think that this topic is appropriate for monetization. Though I've willingly turned monetization completely off. And you are, of course, directly making this sort of thing possible. Let me know what you think about the game. Let me know what you think just in general, as the credits are scrolling through here. Which I will now leave you alone with. Until later.